Good. Any questions, any comments, any whatever thingers that came up last week that you guys like to talk about? Anybody? Any uh, project problems? I think you guys, they all did good so far. I wasn't able to look at some this morning yet, but I will. After we're done. No? I felt good about last week. Yeah. Huh? You guys finished I, it last week, right? Or something. Yeah, no, I felt, I felt good about it. I felt good. Good. Uh, good. Was it, was it feel like it did some good? Was it useful to do it, the project, as an exercise? Uh, sorry. Huh? Which one? Well, Which the, one? The pathology project. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. oh, oh, oh. For some um, people, that's a very difficult project to do. And I kind of, even though it's online, it's kind of a little, mm, I still like to keep it going because I think a lot of people, especially first time students can learn a lot from just uh, doing a presentation i think but how was the experience um, yeah yeah it was uh it wasn't that hard um i you know it's uh it's funny because i i coach executives all the time on giving presentations and uh, after i saw my video recording on mine i just went oh man i need so much coaching <laughs> Right. It was, uh, I mean, I looked like shit. Um, I, I was, uh, I had COVID when I gave, when I recorded it. Uh, and, uh, mm-hmm. I know, you know, I was looking down, I was looking kind of furtive and um, it's uh, anyway, but it, so it it's gave me information. You communicated the information. <laughs> there you well, go. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. No, no. It's, uh, it's good. Uh, to do. I mean, one of the things I say, you know, when, when I coach other people is don't watch a video recording until you're really confident. Because it's the worst. <laughs> oh, you really, and your voice too. You become self so self conscious. Absolutely, your voice is different. Everything is different. Um, so uh, I'm kind of used to seeing myself and used to criticizing myself. But that that was the hardest part for me. Um, I think my other teammates just did an amazing job. I'm so impressed with them. And okay. uh, yeah, so I don't know if you if you even looked at the link, but. Uh, well, well, not yet, not yet. It's coming up after the class. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. I looked at a lot of the presentations I felt really, really good about. And they really, a lot of the students, a lot of you guys really took in the feedback, I think, and and, and worked with it. So I'm very impressed and very grateful for all that good work, because I think it's a good finishing up of the semester um, to, you know, in, in put that Physio- anatomy physiology a little together with uh, talking about pathology when things go a little wrong she does sort of the next step in terms of studying you know medicine or so or, or, or nursing <clears throat> of course you go a little deeper in the anatomy but you don't go that much deeper you you probably get more terminology going around what we're already talked about maybe a little more technical but in essence I, when i uh taught or or also now took the the bio 2 class i actually took it a couple about a year ago with a different professor just sort of to freshen up make sure my class is sort of up to snuff and there's more slides more microscopic stuff in there and and maybe a little bit more terminology but 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 what in essence it's the same stuff it's the same material so it's it's good that way if you go deeper on it um, the physiology, the bio four, can be a little bit more intense. Uh, but if you if you have to do those classes, uh, you can also take the twenty A B versions of anatomy and physiology combined. That's the physiology part. There is a little bit less um, technical. But anyway, I don't know. It depends on what your professional goals are. If you're nursing, then you've got to do those. Otherwise, you're probably good with this class. Um, so what was the number again? I'm sorry. I just joined, but I just caught the tail end. I didn't hear the number of the class. Oh, um, I was just briefly talking about bio two and bio four, which is the anatomy semester and the physiology semester, which are two different semesters. That's sort of the highest level at merit that we take. And that this class that we're just finishing up in essence is, is, you know, the same material and it's to, to a fairly same similar depth it's just there is a little bit more terminology that comes with with that level of class then um i was just finishing up that you know thought because we were talking about the pathology project and how much good work that you all did 
in that. So do we, you said for nursing, you have to have those? Well, if you want to do nursing, you have to do either the 20A and 20B. That's a one year, two semester course, anatomy, physiology combined. Or the level that's a little higher than that level is the anatomy and physiology separated by semester. And one is the anatomy part, that's called the bio two class. And then the other one is the physiology part, that's the bio four class. And those are great classes. They're very good classes. For the bio two, you need my, this class as the prerequisite. Okay, yeah. so you can either just do, is the bio, wait, I'm sorry, bio two and bio four, those are two different semesters, but then a 20A, 20B, is that combined? Yeah, but it's it's also two semesters, but you combine anatomy and physiology. So you do it like my, the way our class was. When you talk about the heart anatomy, you also talk about the heart physiology. It's okay. not, you know, the other class, the bio two, four, you first, you talk about the heart anatomy for a semester or whatever, all the anatomy for a semester, which is kind of what we're doing, right? And then afterwards you do a bio four is you talk about the physiology. So you go a little bit deeper on the physiology than what we did. Do you think, do you have a recommendation in terms of like, you know, kind of just which cataloging the information for yourself? to do them together? Do you think it's better to do them together? Or do you think it's better to do them separate? That's hard. I mean, I really enjoy the anatomy bio four class, but you know, I'm an anatomy nerd, so that's probably why. But um, uh, I, so I like it from a, from a thinking perspective. I like the topic separated, you know, okay. because it's two different things sort of. One is like you identify structures. And so you focus on that and then the other, class is like how does it work how do the structures work together so i kind of like that approach you know but but the physiology can get a little involved depending i taught all the four different classes i taught the other ones too okay okay yeah all right. Thank you. yeah it's a little hard to to tell it and um <clears throat> it's a little it's a little bit hard hard to tell that um but then of course it also depends on the teachers um uh who, who's teaching the material uh but we can also talk more offline and we can look into the different descriptions of the class a little bit more deep okay all right that's great thank you all right yeah absolutely absolutely all right so any other questions and if not we can go brief and do a brief tour through what we did this last week which was nutrition and did you watch the video on that um, nutrition is basically, basically going, you know, after the digestion is like, uh, we want to talk a little bit. I felt, I felt like it's helpful to do a little bit about nu nu nutrition and, and energy and what that all means. Um, and, and, and it's interesting what a calorie is. A calorie is a, is a, a heating, an element of heating water by degrees upward and so we measure that and so we then have a, a number for for um, then um, identifying how many of these these calories these 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 energy giving elements are in different foods and so we have this is probably interesting and helpful to know is you know a gram of carbs and protein is four kilo is four um, calories kilocalories in the gram of fat is nine it's more than double the amount um and which then that gave sort of the the rise to the fat-free diets um at some point which of course the problem with that is that carbohydrates are not satisfying fat is satisfying and so what ended up happening people ended up just eating much more carbohydrates and so you eat a little bit of fat you might have more calories per gram but not as a totality because you don't have to eat that much or, you know, you eat a lot of, 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 of carbohydrate stuff of sugary stuff, which has less calorie by gram, but the totality is much more. And so there's a little bit of a problem in calculation. I, I like, I, I put these sort of combination, you know, things up. So this is like, you know, how many strawberries can you eat and how many, you know, Oreos is it in terms of calories? So that's where the processed food comes in. The less processed, the 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 the, the less dense the calorie. So the less calorie calorie dense the food is at that point is sort of the general concept. 
Alcohol has seven grams, so that's why we have to be a little careful with the alcohol. We don't get a, too much of a, a beer belly or so, because it's actually quite high in, in caloric content. Um, and then the other thing you reaching for the wine as you said that. <laughs> say, say that again. Did you see me reaching for the wine as you literally as you said that? It was about yeah, to take right? a sip of wine. I know. I saw that. I saw that. Well, the wine, the good thing about the wine is at least it's not carbohydrate based. You know, it's it's fruit based. So it's I mean it's different. It's different. It's not the beer. Um, when you look at at, at beer, it's just kind of really hard for diet, you know, the has a lot of calories because of that. Carbohydrate stuff. Um All right. I'll keep drinking. You keep going with the wine, so at least you're doing better with the wine. <laughs> well, it's evening where you're at, so you have a right to have a wine. Um, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? Um, so what a calorie in the body, how we describe how many calories do we need, we have a basic description of a basic metabolic rate. That's resting condition. That's like you're laying in bed you're not doing anything. So that's one calorie per kilogram per hour. A day, so we have a, a you know averagey type person ish, seventy kilogram, about one hundred fifty pounds. So, you know, he kind of double it more or less. The pounds is a, <clears throat> more or less um, times twenty four hours in a day gives you the calories you need more or less in a day, about seventeen hundred. And of course, the, of, of course, I'm saying that I'm sorry. The, the women are always a little bit lower with, with those calculations. But, you know, we're averaging. What's interesting with this slide is that 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 work, light work, moderate work, and heavy work, which it's, it's basically based on, on raising the metabolism. So, you know, exercise stuff is more harder work. So mowing a lawn is moderate work. Moving furniture around is heavy work. But look at that, <clears throat> how fast the calories, calories go up or what the body um, needs um, in terms of maintaining that kind of level of work. Um, and so so that's interesting to know. I mean, when we look at the weight stuff, um, losing weight, it's, it's, it's exercise is important, but looking at what we put into the body, uh, it certainly has a bigger impact from what I understand generally. So analyzing that because it's easy to accumulate, you know, empty calories so to speak and um empty calories looking looking at the types of calories is a lot of carbohydrates is a lot of empty calories so one of the things that is interesting to look at here that i think is is one of the biggest factors again a lot of times in nutrition we're looking at the weight but also the the healthy stuff part but any calorie in drinks is sort of a problem calorie so to speak it's a x it's 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 an it, in many ways an empty calories or the, the other way of saying that is every calorie that you drink you still got to eat the body doesn't recognize drinking as a calorie and so all the caloric drinks are a problem because of that so we're pouring on you know the we're pouring on the the pounds because um uh, a lot of times these calories are empty there. So they're calorie rich foods, even though they're drinks and not um, nutrition rich foods. So that's kind of one thing that is helpful to know, I think, when we talk about, you know, sort of easy nutrition, not too much detail about it. Um, what about you know, smoothies? You know how smoothies are like, oh, make a smoothie, put all this stuff in it. Is that considered? drinking or is that more because it's a little more substantive like if there's oh, yeah. strawberries and kale or whatever in there yeah i think the important part there is to keep in mind that you know how much how much um of uh how much of a juice base do you use that's i think one thing that i try to keep in mind not to use you know i use like a half a cup not that's it of some kind of a pomegranate juice or something what about if you um, don't use it at all? What about if you use like well, not at all? Yeah, no, that's absolutely good because I think I think personally the smoothies are are good, better than extracting the juice, to leave the leave the fiber behind. Because in a smoothie, you're really basically eating fruit in a in a in a liquid format. So I think smoothies are absolutely fine. Okay. Personally, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I do a lot of smoothies myself. And I'm, uh, I'm drinking one right now, and I totally agree. Um, I actually replaced two of my meals with smoothies. So it's not bad. I, it, it, to me, it counts as calories because it counts as a meal for me. And that's probably what I put inside my smoothies. Not only do I use fruit, but I have a meal uh, replacement supplement that helps um, me through the day for meals. And I have yeah, one. And some of those are, yeah, huh? yeah. And some of those are not bad. I use some of that too sometimes. I go get some at Sprouts sometimes. Yeah, and you just got to make sure you're adding protein to it, too. It helps. Right. And the, the the biggest thing with fruits, you know, and that's against me, these are a lot of fruits, we have to be still careful about the sugar content, you know, cool. of, of the fruits versus the vegetables. And so that is, some fruits are higher in, in the sugar content. And so that's when we have to be, if we, if we do have to be a little careful about the sugar um, then we do want to watch out for that when it comes to smoothie secret. Mm -hmm. Just, just as, the, the, but I think generally, a smoothie to me, if you keep the fruit intact, if you keep the, or you put in kale, for example, or, or you know, celery or so, some people can do that. I have a little hard time with the, with the non-sweet stuff, but that's just me. Um, um, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like eating it because you keep everything together. You don't separate the fiber. That's, you know, fiber is really what, what we want to enhance too. That's the other thing, general food tip that I often try to, you know, because I can't, for myself, I can't watch too, too many things. I mean, I can watch like not too much processed and my system can't handle it anyway. So that's not a problem. Um, and then, and then with the fruit stuff, I have, you know, be careful with the, with the sh too much sugary you know, only eating bananas is probably not the best idea either because the sugar Very. is pretty fast, you know. But like blueberries or so, when you look at the, the when you look at that, that's where the glycemic index is interesting. You can look at that for that. Mm -hmm. and, look at that. and then, and then, and then not having any extra or, or little extra sugary drinks, you know. Um, um, and, and again, that depends. I mean, some of these things are unfortunately pretty addictive. Sugar is very addictive, which means I agree. Yeah, it's it's very addictive. And salt, There's salt few, and sugar. Yeah, the first few days of changing your diet and taking away sugar stuff is not easy. You got to make sure you don't be too hard on yourself and reward yourself or whatever you need to do. But be aware. But then after the vow, what did the doctor lately say that I saw? So like you know, after seven days, it's mental. Then it's more mental, and yeah, so it is. for seven days, it's the hardest thing, you know. And so, you know, I find the first three days is is it. If you can get over the three day hump, then you're you're pretty much good to go after that. But you're right. I do feel like again at a week, it's kind of like, okay, so or what are we doing? Are we like doing this long term? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean and. <clears throat> It is. I mean, I see it with myself. I've slowly got myself off the gluten stuff because my system is just, you know, not liking it that much. Makes me more sluggish, uh, and so I'm like, why should I worry about it? You know, and uh -huh. um, and so got got me off the croissants or or you know off the um, maybe a muffin here and there, and then and at some point after you know a few years. Or so I would like, oh, I like them off when I buy one and then I never eat it. <laughs> that happened a few times. But then also when I do go and I'm like, oh, let me have an almond croissant or something. Immediately the next day, I want another one. I mean, it's like the sugar is just a strong, it's a strong pull. It's a very strong pull. And so be be mindful with that, with yourself as you, as you, you know, try, if you want to ch change diet stuff. I mean, yeah, this and again, the, the the sugary drink is the first thing. If you can get rid of that, I think that's a big component. Um, protein, what is interesting about that is just the fact that it doesn't have to be meat. We have a lot of protein in the, in the vegetables as well. And so I think that's... And, and then the other thing that I want to always highlight is eggs are a really good food. Don't Don't think eggs are bad food just because they were talking about it for so long. Eggs are very balanced, and 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 they were talking about cholesterol, and they were making the eggs the villain before the cholesterol was differentiated between LDL and HDL, and so you have to be very careful. I mean, don't eat eggs on mass, 
But, um, you know, uh, having, uh, I, I make sure I buy my eggs, pasteurized eggs from the farmer's market that I get the good stuff from the eggs. And I have like one every other day or one a day, depending on what's going on. I do like a hard boil, but the inside is slightly mushy still. That's apparently the best way. So, so the, the vitamins are not destroyed. Because that's the other thing as we get into, um, we talked about the carbs already a little bit. Um, um, let's do a little bit more about the carbs. You know, everything, the chocolate is carbs. And fruit is carbs. I put this Toblerone on because one time when we just were massage therapists in Switzerland, and my first wife and I uh, went to some friends, my parents' house to, to work on a couple and their name was Tobler, which is a very common name in Switzerland. And my wife said like, you know, she was American and she's like, oh, Toblerone, huh? And I'm like, no, no, every there's Tobler is a very common name. And she's like, yeah, I just want to remember the name Tobler. So I remember Toblerone. And as it turned out, those were the Toblerone people that we actually massaged. <laughs> the, that's the son of the person who invented the Toblerone chocolate. So that's why I have to put it on. But, you know, to carbohydrates. Which are really good, by the way, and hard to eat just one piece. <laughs> I know, right? It's one of those. It's like it just can't be in the house. It's what is it called? In the house. <laughs> huh? Say that again. Y'all talking about it's the, the one there in the picture. See that oh, one in the yeah. lower picture, I've that little triangle about that before. I've never it's had good. Before. Don't do it. Yeah, don't <laughs> start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we also on the carbs, we have, you know, the fruits and the vegetables and stuff. And 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 sugar is not bad because sugar is a preservative. You know, the problem is sugar turns out to be uh, not just preserving, it also, you know, is, is hard on the system. Too much of it. And and they figured that out, you know, salt and sugar are preservatives. And then when we had refrigeration, we, 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 we didn't need those to kind of preserve our foods anymore. Um, but it was also sort of in the 19 teens and 20s. And and they were they were uh, the dentists particular looking at the teeth getting worse over time, and they were starting to predict that like over generations the the body's gonna get less resilient because the foods that we're eating are less natural or more more you know more processed and that's a problem. Um, and then they did this one guy Schrödinger he did an experiment with cats, so he had and that was in the 1920s I think and he was a dentist and he had. He he gave cats either re natural food like meat that wasn't cooked and meat raw meat and raw milk or cooked meat and pasteurized milk. And after a few generations, because cats their generations are small, low, sh shorter than humans, he could see how their uh, offspring's, depending on which group they were, one become more feebly, more feebly, more feebly. The one with the cooked meat. With all, a lot of nutrients are out because the meat's cooked, and for, you know, for for cats it's different than for humans. But that concept is the same. The preservation process makes the food less good, so to speak. And over generations, we see that. And you gotta wonder sometimes about things like an elder Danlow syndrome, for example, which is a collagen uh, pathology where the collagen is not so good. In, a, in, a, in in the joints and in the, uh, well, collagen is everywhere, you know, in the soft tissue. Um, those kind of things that come up more over time are, could be always there, obviously. That's one thing that we get answers to a pathology, a disease that we didn't have answered before. But also the bodies change over time as generations. And I think we got to keep that in mind too. If you want to critically think about about it of what we put in our body over a lifetime. You know, it's it, there's a lot of connections. And so generally one of the food rules that I sort of you try to go by is is what do I like that is natural? What do I like? What fruit do I like? What vegetable do I like? I don't try, I'm not going to try to make myself eat what I don't like, you know, but what I like, I can try to boost that more and eat that more. And naturally, if I boost more what I like, that's also sort of good for me, then you know, more, the, the stuff that's not good for me is easier to shed that or shed some of that, you know. I mean, anyway, that's just my thought. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts to that topic. 
Yes, it's funny that you said that about the cat. So I don't know if anybody has seen that cat that was in the news recently. I can't remember the name. It was like enormously fat cat and it was like 40 pounds and somebody just um, adopted it. This was like in the last month. And the cat is so big that it can't even like walk on its own, really. It's huge. Like this is this is animal abuse. Like how could you just continue to feed it like that? Yeah. <clears throat> My mom's friend had a cat back in the day and we called the cat, I think it was, we called it Fatso or something. And it was like 20 or 21 pounds and it was a big cat, but this cat was twice the size. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like, so that experiment that you were just talking about that the guy had done, th this cat is probably in the lineage of the cats that were eating the processed <laughs> milk and, and meat. Well, yeah, and it, and it's not even just you know partly is the is obviously the weight because when you I mean in humans more caloric, more 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 calorie dense foods, more processed, more calorie dense, less you have to eat, the more calories go into the system. The stomach still wants to have the food in it, right? So the volume, the volume wants to be the same. Um, and 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 with this experiment originally, also the structure of the cat, the bones, the joints, the the muscles, everything became less less resilient, less strong. The immune system, all of that stuff became a little weaker over the generations, sort of like that epigenetic discussion that, you know, people start having more and more. And it's very interesting. Yeah, hopefully that cat is on a better diet. Huh? That would be good. Or like on a like on a on a fast. Anyway. Yeah, uh, on a treadmill or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like upside down or something, huh? <laughs> um, then, so that's the sugar spike is sort of something that we all kind of know about. We talked about that when you talk about carbs. So that's like, you know, if you don't know about sugar spike, just, you know, drink a couple of Cokes and then wait what happens. And you got the jitters a little bit. And and then if a couple hours later, you go later, back to that slide really quickly. Fall asleep, you know? <laughs> huh? Can you go back to that sugar spike slide really quick? Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I wanted to take a, a screenshot so that I can send this to someone. <laughs> Thank right. you. <laughs> no, and I mean that's you know we we all probably know about about it. Particularly in the afternoon, you have a you have a lunch, and then at two o'clock, it's like what the heck happened to me? Um, and because the problem is that the, if it's a sugar, if it's a sugary a sugary food or a, or a high glyce high glycemic food then the sugar get the glucose goes into the bloodstream fast everybody takes up glucose except for the brain cells they ha don't have these receptors to pick it straight up like that they need to get it in different ways or something is different i forgot exactly um, um it's but, but the problem ends up being that well oh no the brain can't store it that's the problem at all and so the brain needs it directly from the bloodstream and so if all the blood the glucose uh, is is one that is a high glycemic index, which means the pancreas secretes a lot of insulin fast. The sugar goes out of the bloodstream fast, and it goes below what we need. And so then the the sugar, so, so we sort of have we flood the bloodstream with sugar, and then we don't have enough in it, and the brain doesn't have any stored, so the brain starts falling asleep. Um, and so that's when we get tired, and so that's then when we crave and we need some more, and we feel hungry again. So that's that bad cycle. And so that's when you eat something that's more, 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 um, uh, more natural carbs or more proteiny. It goes into the, the the sugar, the glucose gets into the bloodstream less fast. The other thing that's helpful with that is fiber. That's why it's good to eat a whole fruit and not something processed from the fruit. You know, a, a carrot is different than a carrot cake. So this is like an IV push versus like a titrating the sugar over yeah, time basically. basically yeah and it's just done with your own eating basically yeah exactly and then when we talk about the carbs we already talked about the thing with the the the, the, the drinking that's another food rule obviously we talked and then we get into the vitamins you know and that's the other thing we have vitamins and minerals and there's just basically a list that i have these things are used they are used um where is that they're crucial helping many processes catalyze. They are helping in catalyzing chemical processes or moving chemical processes forwards. So they're, they're, um, they help with the enzymes a lot of the times. 
Um, we have two types. We have water soluble and fat soluble. The fat soluble, the body stores. So that stuff you don't need to eat every day as a vitamin goes. The, the water solubles, they just pee them out. So you should have those once in a while. That's your B and C, C stuff. And that's, you know, your fruits and vegetables. That's why you got to eat a little bit throughout the day and not just once a day. Uh, but then the vitamin D, for example, the E, the K, and the A, they 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 get stored in the in the fat tissues. So there, you know, you want to have a little bit of fat tissue. You don't want to just be no fat. That's the other side of the equation too. And that's just the well, list I of the stuff. You know, I'm not able to memorize these myself. I mean, you know, so are I they more activated the <clears throat> fat soluble ones? Like when you exercise and you exert energy. That's a good question. I mean, basically what I've read, maybe not vitamin specific, but every system gets activated when we walk, for example. It's one of the reasons why that is such a good ex activity. And so I would assume the, you know, every, if everything gets turned on, it's like, like the motor starts working. And that also means the utilization of these vitamins and minerals and things are more effective and efficient, I would think. Um, when we, you know, don't have vitamins because we have all of this food only when we're young, the body can take it for a while, but at some point post 40, it kind of starts crapping out and it gets not, you know, the things on like vitamin D is very important for like, I mean, there's a direct connection between fibromyalgia and vitamin D, for example. You know, the, 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 and it's very low because the more we are on a computer, the less we are outside and vitamin D is made by the sun. We can eat it as a supplement, but it's still better being made by the sun um, versus, versus ingested with a, with a supplement. Um, and so the, 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 for example, one of the things vitamin D does, it helps from cartilage to bone making process. Uh, and so if that's disrupted, if that's not efficient, then, you know, that's not as well done. Then the material that you use in the body is not as well created. And so obviously it's going to wear down fast. It's like a badly built house. And so that's where these things become important. So we do want to, you know, make sure we get them. And the best way of getting vitamins and minerals is you just eat fruits and vegetables. I'm not going to, you know, and then uh, of course you can have a, a vitamin and supplement as well, but I wouldn't rely on supplementation for your um for your intake of 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 minerals and of 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 vitamins um oh and by the way if we're talking about supplementation i want you to look at the ingredient list if you take supplements mm -hmm. and you want to be very careful what's it's an ingredient if you don't understand the words that's in the ingredients then it doesn't you know then the body has a much harder time to absorb it not that your gut and your brain are together that way but often the chemical, the chemical derivatives that we can call a vitamin, like vitamin, a vitamin B, for example, comes from coal tar or something, and you can eat that all day long, and it's not going to be used by the body. They did an experiment with that in, in, I think, Korean War. They had a vitamin D. I think it was thiamine deficiency. And, and, and the soldiers, the ones who went over there, they had, they had tablets. You know, they already had synthetic vitamins, I guess. And again, I guess the, the, the thing is it's a synthetic vitamin versus a natural vitamin. And so they took the vitamin and nothing happened. And at some point, people, the local people told them to just eat some rice, the shadow shell of the rice, the brown rice part, not the process. That's why we don't necessarily want to eat processed, why we want to eat less processed. Because like in the rice, vitamins are in the outer shell. And if we can use those, then we can, you know, that's good for the body. And so they had them eat those. And voila, the problem was resolved. They didn't have the deficiency anymore. And so, um, again, natural foods better than um, supplements. If you do supplements, look at the ingredients. You want to read something like Brussels sprouts and kale, and you want to understand the words. You know, um, here is a thing of what the minerals do. We have minerals. We have some we need a lot of and some we need very little of. Um, but again, it's macro minerals and micro or trace minerals again here's just a list it, it's not anything that i keep in my brains i'm not that good with memorizing that so i'm not expecting you guys to do it and then the antioxidant discussion is just we have free radicals 
which are unpaired electrons, which are unstable, and so they're reactive, and so we need to get rid of them. Those are the free radicals. And antioxidants are, are able to get rid of them um, uh, by neutralizing them, by giving them an electron and neutralizing them that way. And, you know, you actually create free radicals just like if you're, if you're athletic and you do a lot of sports because using more much ATP creates free radicals. So that's just, a, it's not just the smoking and the sitting around and the eating bad food and that kind of stuff. It's a lot of causes that create free radicals and give us issues. And so um, uh, eating antioxidants, eating minerals and vitamins is very good. Uh, and again, here, then you know why it's good. It's good to neutralize the free radicals, the antioxidant. Um, and, and this is just a slide on uh, what I just talked briefly about, really about uh, vitamins, uh, natural versus synthetic, you know, uh, eating the fruit versus eating, um, eating, eating the synthetic. I mean, that there is a discussion about does the, the today's vegetable have all the nutrients that we need because we did so much monoculture. And we extracted all the nutrients out of the soil. But, um, and so from that perspective, yeah, we might want to have a supplement, but then we want to make sure the supplement is food based, I, you know, not synthetic, um, because we just don't even understand all the stuff that's in food based. I mean, that's why, particularly, synthetic is, 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 is like narrow minded because we just do, we just extract what we understand, but there's so much we don't understand. And synthetic is also potentially done chemically that the body can't utilize it. So that's the two reasons why not. And that's just why tomato and what else? And the last thing is fiber. Fiber is always very helpful. And if we increase the fiber, many things get better. Like, for example, the body it doesn't absorb the sugar so fast if we eat more fiber with, with the sugar than if we, without, if we eat the, the sugar without the fiber. All right, good. Sorry, that took a while. Is that a bit helpful or not? Yeah, very. Good. Now we're looking at the kidneys. Can you see my kidneys? Hello, kidney. So the kidneys do a lot of stuff, huh? More than we thought. So they don't just filter the blood. But it's interesting. They sort of filter pretty much all of the blood, and then they bring it all the way back to the blood. And so it's like, it's an interesting process how that works. I think it's interesting. So they we can get rid of stuff. Well, we get rid of, you know, fluid, and obviously, but we also get rid of metabolic waste products that are liquid uh, and toxic substances. But we also make sure we have the electrolyte concentration acid balance concentration and osmotic pressure so that's blood pressure stuff really uh in that gets regulated in the kidney so that's where they become I mean, it makes sense that you would regulate the blood volume in the kidney since the kidney sort of filters the blood so that kind of makes sense and then um the regulation of the blood cells itself that happens with the kidney the erythroproietin that the red blood cell you know hormone that tells the bone marrow to make that that's interesting too and that again it makes sense because you got all the blood going through the kidney so you can monitor stuff there so it's a good place to monitor things um the kidney we have two kidneys we have a fatty capsule on the outside and on top we have the adrenal gland um so the kidneys they're retroperitoneal which means they're Behind an organized sort of peritoneum is a is a is a is a structure. It's that serous membrane structure. In the lung, it's auctioned along to the chest wall and helps with that, and then helps with decreased friction. In the gut, it it, it helps organize all that long tubing in in ways that uh, that is not kinking the tube, so we get you know problems when the food can't go through it. But we also, uh, but uh, and and have some organs suspended in it too. But it's an organization way. It's less movement dependent there, um, and so that's called the peritoneum down there. That's serous membrane. Uh, but some organs are not in it, and the kidneys are not in it, and so they call them retro peritoneal. So that's why when you do motor bicycling, you should, or at least when I grew up, we did. I have a have a kidney belt on a sort of a stretchy belt that goes around the kidney to squeeze them back low back together so there's not too much shaking because the kidney they are really they can they can that can shake the kidneys too much 
or when you have a car accident and you you have urine some blood into your urine, they x-ray the kidneys because maybe there is some shock to the kidneys that happen. So you have a fat capsule around the kidneys and the fat is protective uh, in the kidneys. So you want to have a fat capsule around the kidneys. If you don't, the kidneys start functioning less and less because they're not protected anymore. And that could be a problem. So that's one place. If we see no fat around the kidneys, you know the body's starving. There's a problem with the body, for sure. When we look in the inside of the kidneys, we have, uh, we have, you know, we call it the slice it in half. And by the way, we have lab tonight. We're going to slice the kidney in half. Um, we, 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 we have an outer shell part. That's known as the cortex. And then we have an inner part that's deeper. That's like here. That region is called the medulla. So some, it's always a, a little bit of a problem with the, the terminology. The regional medulla is an area. So the medulla and the cortex, the renal cortex, they're areas describing. The pyramids are what's in it. So the pyramid is these, and we can, we can sort of dissect it out tonight in the kidneys. Uh, you can sort of squeeze. It's kind of an interesting texture, the kidneys. Um, uh, but you, you have these upside down pyramids in the renal medulla. So the renal pyramids are in the renal medulla. They're the structures. And so then, um, and so, and so then you, you have these pyramids. And what happens is the, 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 the blood arrives to the outside cortex mostly and then gets filtered. Most of the blood gets filtered into the, into the uh, um, renal tubules. And we have a, a long renal tubule system. And then most of that filtrate at that point gets reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. And then gets peed out. Uh, Whatever is not reabsorbed gets peed out. So you have most of the filtration happens in this cortex. And then as we get deeper down, we create that, 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 the, the, the pee, but the, the, the tubules travels around here. And the, the most of that liquid is from the filtrate is back reabsorbed into the blood. And then down below here, as we get into the area where we exit the kidneys, which is always called the hilum, an area where we enter and exit vessels into a structure like that, the lungs are the same. That area is called the hilum. Um, and then we have these, these funnels that collect the urine, the watery stuff that then gets collected, the one that stays behind, not the one that gets reabsorbed in the bloodstream, and then it goes down the ureter, goes down to the bladder, and then into the urethra, goes to the rest of to the world, into the PP. Bye bye. Have a good trip. And so the, the pilla are filters, and the calices are bigger filters where the papillas, no, the papilla, sorry, the papilla is the tip of the pyramid. And then the calices are the filters, smaller filter where one goes to one papilla and then the collections together. And then at the end, we call it the renal pelvis and both sides have one renal pelvis and then that feeds into the ureter. Wherever that ureter. So what are the name of the pyramids? Is that, oh, sorry, I was trying to like. No, go ahead. Oh, that is the. <clears throat> Can you go back to the previous slide? Sorry, we're just trying to. No, 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 absolutely. Okay, so the, and then you said, what happens in the renal pyramids? Well, let's go to that. Okay. So when you look at the, so that's sort of the main structure. So let me see. When you look at the cortex, you mostly have this stuff in the cortex right here. So you have a, a filter area where the blood comes in and gets all filtered into a tubule. And then and then the and then it's called a filtrate. So you filter like, you know, look at this 170 liters a day. That's like 340 pints or something. It's a lot. And then we filter all of that, gets created that much liquid. And then that follows into these tubules. And then and then it goes down. And then here it goes down into the pyramid. These are these are parts of the pyramid in there, or the medulla, basically, is really what we what we want to go in. Because the medulla is an interesting situation. In the medulla, we have a salt concentration situation. 
So as we go down into the medulla, um, uh, we, we actively squeeze out salt on the side that goes, comes, goes to, 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 sorry, I have to back up. The tubule first goes, wiggles around a little, then it goes down into the medulla, and then it goes back up into the cortex. So this is the medulla, this is the cortex. See here it says med cortex medulla. And, and as the tubule goes upward, on the side it goes upward, the wall of the tubules have a lot of um, uh, receptors on it or, 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 or channels on it that, that pull out salt, sodium and chloride out of the filtrate and make the surrounding area very salty. And you see how the salt content is as we go from the cortex downward into the medulla. And then salt, water follows salt. And so then salt will, the water will automatically, passively flow out of the tubules back into the uh, surrounding um, um, interstitial fluid. And then what's happening there is around this area, we have a lot of blood vessel hanging around there and the fluid goes right back into the blood vessel. And so that's sort of what's happening in the pyramid is a big picture. We can then go into the detailed physiology and talk about all the details, what goes happening, except for, but basically we actively pull out salt out of the filtrate and then the water follows the salt. And that's how we can fill, get 170 liters or 340, you know, pints move from the blood system into the filtrate daily. And most of it goes back into the bloodstream. Does that make a little sense as an overview? See, uh, yeah, it's, it's more than I knew before. Yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> and it gets complicated. It gets really complicated. If you go really detail, you know, physiology discussion, it gets complicated. And so this is this area here. This is called the loop of Henley, they call that. The thing that goes down. So that's the filtration system that sort of goes into the medulla and around it is the vasa recta and the vasa recta are these blood vessels that hang around it and they basically reabsorb the liquid going back in and so therefore you bring it back to the cardiovascular system like that and that's how we control the volume of the blood so to speak and how we can get rid of stuff and so when we look at the whole process in a big picture so we have this this area where we filter. We call the, the that area the the Bowman's capsule is where it filters in. So the capsule that holds around uh, glom the glomerulus, which is capillaries that basically are you know seeping liquid out. And so together that's a filtration system. And then that's where we secrete all these you know 170 liters in. And we call that the filtrate. So filtration is when the block goes into the lumen into the filter. Yeah, I mean into the into the um, tube, and then we call this tubule. This year, the proximal tubule, proximal actually proximal convoluted tubule. If you really want to be exact, and that's happening in a cortex, and then that's the beginning part, and then it goes down into the medulla that tubule, and that's where we call it the loop of Henley. I don't know who Henley was. I always think of Don Henley, but you know that wasn't him. Um, and then and then we have a part that goes down and the part that goes back up. And then at the other end, we have what we know as the distal convoluted tubule. And then from there, whatever is left in the liquid goes into what we call the collecting duct right here. And the collecting duct goes into the uh, renal um, papilla, then the calyces, the pelvis, the ureter, the bladder, bye-bye out into the world. That's what we pee out. And so we have all this filtrate that gets made here. And then, and then along the way, we have this reabsorption happening. And we talk briefly about the salt, how the salt and water connection happens. So this is where this osmosis happens a lot, where water solid follows the salt or an ion. So that's, a, you know, that's sort of the concept that we use down in here, which is what we just talked about. Um, and then we have one more. So we call that reabsorption when we go from the lumen, from the fill, the tubule back to the blood. And then we have one more thing and we call that secretion because the some of the substances 
don't just filter through. And so we actively need to pull them out of the blood, like the toxins that we want to get rid of. And that's why medications, for example. And that's one thing why, why medications, if you look at where they're hard on, they're hard on the kidneys and they're hard on the liver, basically. Um, and so we call that secretion. And so that's also important um, to, to clean the block, basically. That's another process, but these are active processes. This here is passive. Whatever we can do passive in the body, we do a passive process in the body, including a nerve impulse. It's just establishing it, but then passive, because passive is much easier to make it happen. And passive is also much faster in the nerve impulse. That's why we do passive. And then down here, we extreat and everything. And so that's basically it, I think. How is that? And so one of this construct that I just talked to you about, that call that a nephron. A nephron, see that? The long tubular system. So that's like one functional unit of the kidneys. And we got like, like a million of those things. And all together, they make those peak. Um, all right, let me make sure. Falling blood pressure prompts the renin. So then we got this. And it, you interrupt me if you have a question, otherwise I'm keep going. See, and this is like how the blood vessel in the glomerulus in that area filters the blood, how the, 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 the cells, they're known as podocytes because they have little feet, how they cling around these, um, these um, capillaries, and that's how the filtrate happens. So that's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. Oh, boy. Uh, what else? Where is my renin? So we have a couple of um, um, mechanisms how we look at the water content, how much water we pee out. One of them is the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. And basically, we need to have that mechanism because we need to modify blood pressure. Um, and so fluctuations, we need to make sure we, we have mechanisms to get rid of more water or less water. And so, and so when we, the, the renin measures that, the measures when the blood pressure falls, and that's the first, and that's secreted by the kidney. And then that starts a cascade it, that goes into angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2, and then ultimately aldosterone, aldosterone blah, blah, blah. and angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2. Um, are interesting because they the blood pressure falls, so they create more thirst, so we bring in more fluid into the system, and also uh, it's ways of constrictive, so it, it it squeezes the blood vessel walls a little bit and makes that blood vessel um, um, narrower, so you have less area for the same amount of volume of blood, so the blood pressure goes up as well because of that. But then the next thing, what it does, it's it's do it's it stimulates that aldosterone. It activates that, and aldosterone goes into the kidneys. Aldosterone here goes into the kidneys, and uh, one of the things it does, it reabsorbs sodium, and water follows sodium, and so when we have um, uh, uh, when we have that, water follows the sodium. So we're going to keep more water behind. So we increase the volume of what liquid in the blood system, in the cardiovascular system. So we increase the blood pressure through that process by increasing the blood volume. And so that's kind of an interesting sort of thing. And then we got one more of the pieces uh, when we look at hormones, and that's the ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, or I call it the ANTP hormone and that in that automatically secretes um 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 aqua water directly um opens the aquaport and water flows through the into the bloodstream so the water flows back into the bloodstream uh when these aquaporins are open here's the picture for the aquaporin so it's the anti diuretic anti p so you keep more water in the system but this doesn't work with the salt this directly works on the receptors and the water is retained that way and the volume goes up that way and this is an interesting one because you can feel that when you drink alcohol or caffeine because those resist or those decrease the ntp hormone and that's why all of a sudden you gotta go pee all the time um, because you're you're flushing out the water. 
Or if you go to Italy and you get an espresso, they bring your glass of water with it to replenish what you're peeing out extra because you don't have that anti pee hormone working for a little bit. So that's an interesting one where you can see that how that works. Anywho, that's about all I got to that. How are you guys doing? I know I'm already going over time here. It's like a whole little city in there. Huh? <laughs> it's like a whole little city in there. Where? Inside oh. the kidneys. <laughs> yeah, like it's little, intense, like right? If you actually go like, holy. Like a water holy. plant like, or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got, you know, and one of the things that I think is important to that I like, I mean, I like the, this class particularly because we can sort of really talk about the systems without having to be hung up on too many detailed terminology, uh, but understand and be in awe of it. You know, it's amazing how that stuff works. Yeah, I just had, I didn't really make the correlation between the kidneys. And Tosha has a question. Okay. High blood pressure. Yeah, yeah. But now you understand why it makes sense, why it's related, right? Yeah, and the, the sodium that is related. Right, and that's where sodium and eating comes in. All right, Kintosha, what's going on? Uh, I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, are, is there going to be a review or some kind of videotape or a review that you're going to be showing uh, in uh, in planning for the last test? Yeah, let's go through that. So let's talk about this uh, week real quick. Uh, we have reproduction and embryology left to do. Repro has a little bit of uh, coloring part. The test excludes those chapters. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, we also have a discussion on the food journaling, uh, a survey that I like you guys to do, and then that's it from the materials perspective. And then we go into the test. And so I've been trying to point out before multiple, or I always try to try to go to that as much as I can. I want you to look at that material. Hopefully, you many of you have. Is that is that the there is that part of the review? No, uh, yes. so is there is there is there a videotape of a review of the exam that we can watch? Mm -mm. Because I don't see any video connected to it. Well, there is. Okay, so the test review of the written part, which is I think about 25 questions, is in all these bullet points. So if you under, if you print that out or whatever, wherever, however you do it download it, and you have all these, you understand all of these points, you're good to go for the test. So I don't have a video on that. That's kind of what we've been working towards. But I, if you understand all of those points, all the answers for the questions are in those bullet points. Now, if you don't understand them, then you're uh, then you gotta make sure you understand them. Because if you don't understand them, it doesn't make sense. But if you understand them, you're good to go. So you can check it off. Go like I got this, I got this, I got this, and then doing the test, I give you plenty of time, and you can just basically use it as a reference. Again, I want you learn applying your information in the test. It's not, in my opinion, not about memorization. I also have all the terms that we've been studying for the anatomy portion, which is what the test two is about, the labeling stuff. And they're all on this sheet. So do the same thing, print this out. There's no extra term other than on this list that I'm going to ask you on the anatomy portion of test three. And test three is structured like test two in part and like test one in part. The first portion, the 25, about 25 question is like uh, test one. And the second portion, which is the anatomy portion, which is the rest is actually 65 questions on this. The rest of it is structured like test two. However, I'm using it in multiple choice and not fill in the blank. So you don't have to type anything. 
you just have to choose the right answer of the anatomy term from four answers that I give you, four choices. I think I timed the test that I think I changed it to three hours, not two hours, but you should plenty of plenty of time. I'm not gonna worry about the time. And then oh, and I do have review videos if I put them up. I have to make sure I put those up and not see it here. These are actually supposed to be review videos of the anatomy terms. So that's kind of like it was in test two, but I need to put them back in. Um they somehow got the link got corrupted or something. So I'll do that right after the call. So that way you can watch these three videos or something and you have all the anatomy terms reviewed on the models that I use. And here's the models that I use for test three or here. And so you can download that too. This is a little bit, yeah, this we haven't used in class. This is a little bit uh, more chink if you print it. So I'm not sure if you want to print it, but it's good to have it at least to like go at least one time through the anatomy term list with those pictures and be able to um, uh, be able to know which one is which. And then you should be fine in terms of the test. Sensible or questions? Sounds great. I'm, I have to hop off to another meeting, but is there in lab, you said we're doing, we're dissecting the kidney later? Okay. And this is the last lab? Yes, this is the last in-person lab. Okay. What's the actual final date of the class? The 26th. Okay. And the, and the test is due on that day? Yes. And make okay. sure the 26th is a Friday. Okay. That's the goofy part. And by then the canvas closes and I can't give you extensions. Gotcha. However, I can give you for till Sunday with the labeling stuff because you can send me a picture. Got you. Okay, perfect. Canvas closes. Unfortunately, I can't exchange do anything with that. It closes then. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you this evening. Excellent. Yes, please. Okay. Everybody Have come. a good day, everyone. Thank you. Phyllis says thank you also. Thank you. Did that help? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you have anybody have a problem with being able to finish or, well, we, we, we I want to get work you as much as possible that you can finish because putting in a, an extension sometimes, I mean, I had the school take nine months to change it from an incomplete to a complete. It's like and then it and then it disrupts the, 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 the progress of your education. So we do want to try to complete everything as much as we can if it's an issue. But please reach out. Please be proactive now. We have between now and the 26th that we can finish everything up. And I think the last thing that I did not uh uh mention for the week is I want to make sure you finish up. So put your project name on the post <clears throat> I want to make sure you finish up the pathology project discussion. I think it's under here. This okay. All right, that one is actually, I going to have that one do on the 26th. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it till 21st now, but I, I will open it again. Because I really want you guys to 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 use that discussion and learn from each other as a final project. Um, All right. Is this the interpreter? And you know, if it's a problem with the captioning, you guys, um, I just think about that. Shoot me a text, which video you want captioned, and I can see if I can caption it in the background. Because I have a feeling the students didn't. And if it's YouTube, I think we can go through YouTube and have it there, but I'm not sure. I just thought of that. All right, Coach and Phyllis, could you do that? And see the difference in the food or the ice cream from having food color. You know what? I'll talk to you in a second. Hello? Natasha said yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the interpreter said a quick question. Are you holding a Zoom? meeting next week, next Monday? 
Uh, yes, I think we'll we'll meet up uh, 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 briefly. I'm not sure yet if I'm reviewing Embryo and Repro, or I generally don't. But over the years, sort of everything gets a little developed um, uh, because it's not part of the test because it's the last week, so people can study. Um, but we definitely, I want to have Q and A. Uh, Q&A time. Okay. Thank you for that. Got it. Pantosha says. All right. Thank you, Phyllis says. Thank you. And goodbye. I think we're all good. Have a good, have a good one, you guys. Thank you for hanging in and spending a little time with us. Back from my house. Yes. Who, who, who?